Within the first month of being in America, my father decided that he was going to start giving us English lessons. The first phrase that he taught us was, Hi, my name is Amina, and I am not a terrorist. When I was a child in Iraq, uh, my father was helping the Americans rebuild the country after the war. As a result, he was targeted by terrorists, so we needed to leave the country for our own safety. The United States has been my home ever since. My parents were very conservative Christian. You know, no Halloween, no dating. I mean, I'm, I'm very proud to be a Texan, proud to be an American. I support our president. GDP's never been higher, unemployment's never been lower. I can't say anything that he's doing wrong. One of the things I liked about Trump was his hardline stance on immigration. I didn't think that Muslims and Americans could coexist. I thought Muslims were too radicalized. After the 2016 election, I went to a Love Trump's Hate rally. And as we marched towards the Capitol, I noticed some people in the crowd that were clearly there to make trouble. This is where it happened, surrounded by Antifa. I noticed a guy standing over there, obviously a Trump supporter. These guys just swarmed me. I saw them grab his hat. Next thing I know, there's this tiny Muslim lady standing between me and Antifa demanding that they back off. As someone who has had people try to rip my hijab off my head, something snapped inside me. That was the night I met Amina. That was the night that I met Joe. So I don't know if I ever told you this, but a couple months after we met, I actually attended a anti-Sharia rally. And, uh, you know, this I'm just- was in Austin? Yeah, it was right, it was the same spot, right okay. in front of the Capitol. Okay. While I was there, I, I noticed that uh, there were real life Nazis at the rally. And so I'm sitting there and I'm looking at the, the people across from us and the, the wall of police. And then I look on our side and I'm like, am I associated with these people? Mm -hmm. You know, I was disgusted with myself. And obviously there was some kind of connection between my beliefs and their beliefs. Mm -hmm. So I just, I had to change something. Yeah, so did meeting me contribute in any way to you being disgusted by being on the same side as the Nazis? Well, absolutely. I mean, not only was I reflecting on my side as seeing that there were Nazis there, I was looking at the other side and seeing that there were good people there, mm -hmm. which I had never done. Growing up, I felt I was a little isolated at times. Seeing ISIS beheadings and things of that nature on TV, it genuinely scared me. Why did you go to this anti-Sharia rally? Did you feel threatened by Islam as a religion? A lot, very, very threatened. Before meeting you, I believed that Islam was this violent, hateful religion, that there was no difference between ISIS and uh, the Muslim faith. My frustration is that it's not true, that Muslims are incapable of assimilating into Western society, that we're prone to violence, like these, these things are just simply inaccurate mm -hmm. of who we are as people. And then there's another level of that, of fear. It makes me have fear about, does this worsen discrimination against Muslims? How did you end up at the, uh, at the Trump protest? At the time after I realized Trump had won the election, I felt really threatened by his presidency. And so I thought, what if there's some merit to that hard left thinking? What if they're right about needing to be a revolution? What about that night made you step in and put yourself between me and the people that were trying to attack me? I just had this moment of realization that I don't want the Antifa people to represent what I stand for. I have experienced anti-Muslim bias being here. A lot of people seem to have a lot of assumptions about my religion. 
that I don't do normal American or young people things. This affects the way that I try probably more than other people to show myself as a three-dimensional person with regular people hobbies and with regular people dreams, American dreams. Yeah, I voted for Trump, but I don't see myself as the typical conservative monolith. I'm pro-choice, pro-legalization of marijuana, and I'm not very religious. It took a lot of self-reflection to realize that the other side can be just as three-dimensional as I am. You said that you do believe that Muslims are misrepresented in the media in America, and so people have a lot of stereotypes about Muslims and Islam. Yet you still align with the president, even though he doesn't help the fact that a lot of people have misconceptions about Muslims and Islam. So do you feel like his rhetoric matters? Absolutely. I mean, re any rhetoric matters, but you got to take a lot of it with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. If some Trump supporters were to be ambivalent about immigrants or refugees, or if they were to be on the fence about Islam or Muslims, his rhetoric would make them sway more towards the hateful side mm -hmm. because he confirms what racists say. When I see the anti-immigrant rhetoric in the news, I just think back to people like my grandfather who came here in his 60s and has embraced American culture and adapted so well. And I just think that the way that they talk about immigrants is just factually wrong. People come here for a reason. They come here to pursue their dreams. They come here to, you know, be safe. They come here to contribute to society. I'm saddened by the polarization and by the lack of of discourse, I think if that continues, it could have disastrous effects. Mm -hmm. What was it about me standing up for you that caused you to self-reflect? It was honestly, I never thought that anyone who wasn't aligned with my viewpoint cared. In that moment, I heard your voice just, you know, the pitch just went over everything and it was just like, all of a sudden, I wasn't alone. Mm. If someone like me, someone who's never left their hometown, can change their paradigm, then anybody can, honestly. To a lot of people, Trump represents racism, bigotry, xenophobia. But I support Trump because of his economic policy, strong border, and gun rights. So if someone's gonna judge me because of the hat that I'm wearing, what chance do we have for discourse? When you stepped in that night at the rally, you were my bridge between catastrophe and enlightenment. It was gonna turn violent, and because of your actions, I really learned something about myself, and that's that if we don't see ourselves in other people, we can never grow as a nation. It becomes you versus me as opposed to us. Both of us still want to see this country do the best that it can. And a big thing that we have in common is that we realize it's important to talk to other people. And we realize that it's more valuable to talk to people that disagree with you than it is to talk to people that agree with you who are going to confirm everything that you already believe. Like I said before, you stood as a mountain between them and me. And it's, it's honestly, I uh, can't thank you enough for that. <laughs>